Hello dear viewers and welcome to another episode of Kebab Connoisseur. As I was riding my motorbike on this gloriously sunny day through the English countryside, I stumbled upon something really cool. So if you can see behind me here, there is some kind of a warehouse and it says Allied Forces Unit 1. So let me show you what uh, it's all about. Here, it seems to be some kind of storage space partly for the US Army vehicles, so we can see a military truck there, some kind of a personnel carrier, and then in the back, I'm not sure if you can see it, uh, it seems like some kind of a cannon and artillery piece. So yeah, it's very Americanized. However, the coolest thing of them all is right here, which is an actual tank. So yeah, you can come here, have a look at the actual tank, you can touch it. I'm not sure if you can climb into it, but yeah, it's a very cool thing. Not your typical introduction to a kebab connoisseur episode, but you know, whenever I find something as cool as this, I'm always uh, happy to show it to you. As you know, my channel is not solely about kebabs, but also about travel and education as well so yeah this is it so off we go back onto the bike over there and we'll continue our journey towards somewhere yeah then when i get hungry i'll try to find where the nearest kebab shop is luckily in england it's never too far away Hello once again dear viewers, today is your lucky day because not only will you see a kebab review, I have two cool things to show you right now. I'm here on River Severn, which is a river separating southwestern England from Wales, and I'm standing on the corpse of a ship. So I read a bit about the history of this place. And they basically say that this river used to erode the land here and then to protect the land they used to bring old unwanted ships. They would let them fill with soil and whatever, although these parts seem to have been concreted as well. And then that created a barrier over time and stopped the erosion. It is very windy here as you might uh, see or hear. And uh, yeah, let me just show you how exactly all this looks. So there's a couple of old ships here, as you can see. That's one ship, another where we are just standing. And then there's a handful of ships over there as well. So yeah, this is River Severn. Well, at least that windmill in the distance is having a good day with so much wind. So yeah, this is the second cool thing I can show you in this video. Hopefully the third cool thing will be a kebab. So I'll see you soon when I find a kebab shop to review. Hello dear viewers and greetings from Dursley. Now you probably your first question when you hear Dursley is uh, where the hell is it? Well, it is a small town or even a village northeast from Bristol. So basically this was the closest kebab shop I found to the ship cemetery. And right behind me there is Kings Hill Takeaway. So I suppose that Kings Hill is a part of Dursley. And luckily it is working even though it is just slightly over 3 p.m. today. You know, lots of kebab shops only open at 4 or 5. So yeah, let's go in, let's grab a kebab, probably review it somewhere here. There is a bench over there which looks nice. Unfortunately, there's loads of screaming children around here as well, which is really annoying me. We'll see. But yeah, first things first, let's grab a kebab. Hi there, can I get a large mixed donor? Large mixed kebab? Yes. Oops. 
Uh, all salads, sauce, chili, and garlic. Yeah. Uh, no, that's it. They pay with card? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so he said five minutes. I thought that instead of uh, sit standing and waiting in the kebab shop, we could uh, explore Dursley a bit, especially this part called King's Hill. So, well, there's not really that much to explore, to be honest. Um, so we have Oak at King's Hill, a pub. Some bins over there for recycling. And have this parking lot. Something that used to be called Great British Takeaway, at least that's what I think, uh, but it's closed now. Then King's Hill Takeaway, where we just went, and then we have something like King's Garden, which is Cantonese and English Takeaway, then a barber, Domino's, and a corner shop selling wine and beers. So yeah, not that much to show in Dursley, and I'm sure there's more interesting parts than this one, but this is the place which had a kebab. Yeah, this is where we will be. Okay, dear viewers, so we got our kebab. So there were two benches here on which I could have sit. One is nice and flat, and I thought that would be very good to measure a kebab. However, uh, that one was full of bird shit. So I'm gonna sit on this other one, but this one is tilted. So what we'll have to do is we'll need to put this scale on the floor. So, kebab with the paper, 857 grams. So that's a pretty good number. I got, uh, I think, like more than 100 grams compared to last time. I think this is roughly 100 grams per pound. So, you know, it is kind of on that level where uh, it's good value for money. So let's dive into it now. Okay, so I guess a positive thing about this bench is that I can put my foot down here, which means I can sit comfortably and record this. Here is the kebab. Okay, hope you can see it. So it's quite packed with ingredients. Uh, I took a mixed one. From vegetables we have carrot, cabbage, cucumber, lettuce, tomatoes, probably onions as well, somewhere. And I just see garlic sauce, I hope they put chili as well, it's just underneath and I cannot see it. So they did put sauce on both the salad and the meat, which is good, I like it. It seems to me that they forgot to put chili sauce, but they just put garlic. This is not spicy at all, not one least bit. Oh, wait, is this chili sauce? I think they put some sauce after all, it's just deep down at the bottom, covered by garlic sauce completely. Yeah, so far so good. It seems like a solid, decent kebab. Okay, yeah, I see onions as well now. I would, it, would be, it would be very surprising if a kebab did not include onions. Now in these smaller places it's always a risk, there's not much competition. I'm not saying that all kebab shops are like this, I'm sure there's a lot of kebab enthusiasts which call kebab shops and that really pride themselves in their work. But there's also a lot of dodgy takeaways and then when you're located in a small town like this one, you don't have much choice, you have one, maybe two kebab shops at best and you know there's not that much competition or for example if we can see here there was two takeaways one next to each other but one of them is closed while they were one next to each other i'm sure that this great british takeaway and kingsville takeaway were competing on taste prices etc i do not know when this great british takeaway went under when it closed but since then it is quite likely that king's hill did not need to try as hard to keep customers. In fact, I'm sure that a lot of old customers from the Great British Takeaway simply switched to Kingshill. 
Of course, this is just pure speculation on my side. Teika will be solely judged based on the quality of their kebab, but they will definitely not be judged based on the fact whether a takeaway next to them is closed or opened. We are reaching that well-known point where one finishes the salad and there's only meat and bread left. We need to continue eating through the kebab and then at some point we'll reach that other stage where we attempt to put the reminder of meat into the pita bread and eat it like a sandwich. So the way that they put sauces is quite interesting. So they put chili sauce solely on the meat but then they put garlic sauce both on the meat and the salad. And I think actually it's a good combination like that. I think that's a nice touch. Salad, I mean of course I can eat it spicy, I like spicy stuff. But it's also kind of nice when you just have a garlicky sauce. Garlicky taste to the salad rather than chili and garlic. Of course this only works if your salad is fresh. Otherwise it's gonna taste awful, but it is fresh in this case. Or at the very least I couldn't tell the difference. Now as I'm looking down, I can see that the pita has already broken up. We we'll need to bite off chunks of bread and then mix it with the meat in our mouth. Not my preferred way of doing things, but at this point I'm used to it. Now bread, it's a bog standard pita bread that you encounter in takeaways all over UK. Not much is really said about it slightly toasted on the outside because I think they throw them on the grill. Now the name of the game is how to eat this bread without getting your fingers dirty. It's impossible to eat it with a plastic fork. It's too hard for that and the fork is gonna break. Maybe a part of it did break but maybe maybe I could try to eat it as a sandwich now. Now let's give it a go. I'll get my fingers dirty but no. This must be the third time in a row, I think. I try to eat kebab as a sandwich towards the end with meat inside the pita and the pita breaks as soon as I try to pick it up. On one hand this is good because it means it soaked up all the drippings from the meat, but on the other hand, yeah, you just cannot mix the ingredients the way you want to. Okay, I managed to grab pita towards the end. It is very nice because this top is totally soaked in fat. The bottom is a bit dry, so I'm trying to dip it in the oil from the bottom. Now, overall, it was a solid kebab. There was really nothing outstanding about it. Uh, there was nothing really bad that I could complain about. So it's gonna get three out of five. It's a bog standard kebab as one would expect it to be. Yeah, that's King Seal Teichauer in Dursley. I could not recommend you to actually travel all the way here just to get a kebab. As I said, it's nothing outstanding, but if you are in this neck of the woods, hungry and you crave a kebab, you can definitely get it because they are solid. I said for this kebab I really didn't have anything special to complain about but on the other hand I didn't have anything outstanding to sing praise to. It is also decent value for money, close to 100 grams per pound. Not quite there but I think that's only because I took a mixed one. If you take either chicken or beef, I think you're gonna be exactly at something like 100 grams per pound. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week in another review. So, that was Kings Hill Takeaway in Kings Hill Road in Dursley, southwestern England. Good but not great describes this kebab more than any other one, with both the taste being a solid 3 out of 5 and the value for money being very close to 100 grams per pound. It is a solid choice of a meal if you are nearby and hungry, but I would not travel from afar just to sample it. That is all for today, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in another episode.